talked about this being our Super Bowl. Hey, expect that kind of effort. Expect the good teams. Let's hit it rolling now. Let's earn this thing today. Nothing gets away from us. Let's earn it today, okay? It's our turn. great things we can be doing, and the best one is kicking their ass. Yes, baby. Oh, yeah. In 1991, the Washington Redskins were more than simply the league's most successful franchise. They were the perfect football machine, an overwhelming force of brutal efficiency. Back to pass, looking in the end zone, throws it to the near side, picked off in the end zone. Let's get battle! It's our ball game, man! Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's our ball game! To the 40s, through a seam to the 45, to the 50, near sideline 40, first race, all the way, here go, all the way! No NFL team won more games or scored more often than the Washington Redskins. Let's go, Dave. Let's go, baby. Get it back. Let's move the chains. Byron Deep got a man down there. It's Clark. He's got it in the two. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. There goes Rippin back, looking left all the way. In the end zone, got a man. Right, Diving right. catch. Hard right, bump. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Woo. With power and precision, Washington rolled to division and conference titles, then crushed the Buffalo Bills in Super Bowl XXVI for their third world championship in a decade. Rippin back to pass on a quick shot. Throws it in the near flat to Biner at the five, dies to the corner. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Going deep, he's got Clark in the end zone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. The World Championship has been secured. Picked to win it all before the season even began. They have fulfilled the promise. World Champions. nation's capital, the seat of power, the center of government, where laws are debated and politics are their own spectator sport. In a city where two sides exist on every issue, one unifying force brings together all rival factions on Sunday afternoon. doesn't agree with the Congress, Congress doesn't agree with themselves, House doesn't agree with the Senate. You can have constant fights, constant turmoil, constant commotion, nothing settled. Everything's up for, up, uh, for grabs, except the Washington Redskins. 1991 would be a star-spangled season for Redskin fans, and it began on a steamy Sunday evening over Labor Day weekend. The opponents were the Detroit Lions, who in their entire history had never won a game in Washington. On this night, that losing streak was painfully extended. The defense registered its first shutout of the season, and the offense buried Detroit in an avalanche of points, rolling to the most lopsided winning margin in team history. Back he goes, avoids the pass rush, going deep on the fly to Clark, caught, touchdown, Washington Red Also unleashed was the newest long-range weapon in Washington's arsenal. The kick away, a low fluttering one. Mitchell takes it to the 32, he's out to the 40, through a seam to the 45, to the 50, near sideline 40, horse race 30, he's gone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. For the one with Detroit, that really gave me confidence for the whole season. Going to your first game and return a punt for a touchdown, something I had never done. Really, until I got into the pros, I had never returned anything, kickoffs or punts. And to do that, you know, it just gave me a lot of confidence. It made me feel that, hey, I can do this and I really belong. 
Mitchell ranks second among league punt returners, and the ex-college quarterback also finished near the top of the charts in special team tackles. He was just one of many standout performers on the Washington kicking teams. Kelly Goodburn's punts yielded the lowest return yardage in the conference, while Chip Miller had the kind of season most kickers can only dream about. Chip earned all pro honors with a league-leading 149 points, becoming the first NFL player since 1945 to outscore an entire team all by himself. Low Miller's leg became Washington's most lethal weapon in a wild Monday night shootout against arch rival Dallas. The Redskins scored early on a Mark Rippon to Jimmy Johnson touchdown pass, but the Cowboys responded and surged to a 21 to 10 second period advantage. The disconsolate Redskins didn't stay sad for long as Low Miller rode to the rescue with a quartet of long-range field goals. It was a tough, close game with Dallas, and uh, you know they're our big rivalry. I just want to go out there and help the team out as best as I can. But as I game went on, and I started, you know, realizing what I was doing, you know, I felt so comfortable out there, and I was, I was having a good game. It gives you a lot of confidence. That Monday night game uh, helped me out a lot. But, uh, you know, you have to have the mental aspect of the game. You have to be able to go out there and have confidence in yourself that you're going to make every kick. And I think that's the only way you'll be successful. Low Miller drilled a pair of 50-yarders in one quarter alone, an NFL record. And two more touchdowns by Art Monk and Gerald Riggs clinched the comeback win, snapping Washington's six-game losing streak in Monday night games. Points would be far less plentiful for the opposition the following week when the Redskins returned home to host unbeaten Phoenix. The Cardinals had not won in Washington since 1978, but now appeared cocky and confident. Phoenix was hopelessly overmatched as the relentless Redskin defense chalked up its second shutout in his many home games. One especially inspired performer, with good reason, was Charles Mann, number 71. Baby Cameron, can you read that? Born today, 646. That's for my family. I gotta get one more sack, though. I got two kids. After that, I'm through. Mann got the second sack for his offspring, sharing the spotlight with number 58 linebacker Wilbur Marshall, who picked off a pair of interceptions. Back is two for the pass again. Looking, looking, fires it out of the middle. It's picked off. Wilbur Marshall's got it for the second time with the 48. Fakes the pitch out down to the 30. He's to the 25. Cuts back to the 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. What a beautiful return by Wilbur Marshall. While the defense notched its first score of the season, Washington's Hogs were doing their part to keep the points plentiful on offense. Yeah. All right, he rolls right now, Snake. He goes down in there and he just takes off on your ass. Go on upfield and pick up the next one. Jake, not just... The league's best offensive line showcased textbook blocking as center Jeff Bostic, number 53, and number 69, guard Mark Schlereth, guaranteed safe passage for running back Ernest Biner. Once going to go deep, got a man wide open. Clark runs underneath it, on it, touchdown. Washington. The victory put Washington alone at the top of the NFC East. Three, baby. That's three, baby. Way to play, Will. We keep it going. We got a good offense going, good running game. Then we can work the passing game. It's going to work out. It's going to work out good. Little trouble was anticipated when the Redskins journeyed to Cincinnati to play the winless Bengals. And by midway through the third quarter, Washington enjoyed a comfortable 27-10 advantage. 
Donovan Mitchell cuts it back up to the 40, to the 45, midfield, 50, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, he's gone, goodbye, the 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Does it every week, unbelievable. But the game quickly became a nail-biter as frustrated coach Joe Gibbs watched his team's lead evaporate during a furious second-half Bengal comeback. Tied at 27 with barely five minutes remaining, the Redskins called six consecutive running plays on their game-winning scoring drive. A drive capped by Gerald Riggs' third touchdown of the afternoon. Motion, handoff to Riggs, going right side, untouched in and up end zone, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Matters proved far less suspenseful the following week back at RFK when division rival Philadelphia came calling. In 1991, the Eagles boasted the finest defense in the league and one of the best in NFL history. But a nationwide Monday night TV audience saw Washington encounter few problems moving the ball all evening. In fact, both Redskin touchdowns appeared almost embarrassingly easy. Back goes ripping the pass, deep drop, throws it up high, got Monk at the five, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Rippin hands the Biner on the delay, got Lachey ahead of him, waltzes into the end zone for a touchdown, Washington Redskins. Indeed, the best defense on the field was wearing burgundy and gold. Washington held the Eagles to less than 100 total yards and only four first downs, while posting an astounding third straight shutout at home. No defensive unit in team history had ever begun a season in such dominant fashion. They call themselves the National Defense, a defense that even Pentagon generals would have been hard-pressed to equal. We've had some obstacles to overcome, and our defense, instead of going in there with their heads down because we've turned the ball over on a, either a special team or, or a, an offensive turnover, they've gone in there with the attitude, hey, this, you know, they're not going to get it in the end zone. They're playing about as good as anyone's played in the league this year. It began with the defensive line of Eric Williams, Tim Johnson, Fred Stokes, Jason Buck, Jumpy Gathers, Bobby Wilson, Marcus Cook, and All-Pro Charles Mann. They blended wild-eyed ferocity with the single-minded discipline of well-schooled professionals. You're making thousands of dollars to play a football game. We played it as little kids when we weren't getting any. All you were getting was a pat on the back from your coach or a little pat on the behind from your play fellow players saying good job or whatever, and that was enough. Now we're getting paid to do it. You better be ready. The Redskins played defense with a purpose, a specific task for every man. Nowhere was this more evident than at linebacker, where veterans Monty Coleman and Matt Millen split time with young role players Andre Collins, Kurt Govea, and Raven Caldwell. Add in star Wilbur Marshall and Washington always seemed to have the right players on the field to stop anyone. When you're playing good team defense and you have 11 guys hustling to the ball, you know, that's the difference. You know, that's why teams are scoring on us at home. If there's one thing this Washington Redskins team 1991 is going to do, and that, that's going to be hustle. A critical key to the Redskins' success came from its league-leading giveaway-takeaway differential. Few secondaries in football were more larcenous than the Washington lineup of Martin Mayhew, Danny Copeland, Brad Edwards, Sidney Johnson, Al Boyd Mays, Clarence Vaughn, A.J. Johnson, Alvin Walton, and Terry Hogue. Among the Redskins' solid core of defensive backs is one player who can rightfully be labeled a superstar. The NFL's fastest man is energized by enormous confidence and an occasional chocolate chew. 2-2-0, two, two, oh, buddy. Make you run fast. When you have a lot of speed like I do, normally, uh, should I say most every time, I'm faster than my receiver. 
Being able to take the top receiver on your team and saying to the other 10 guys, you guys play over there and I can take this one guy by myself without any help and shut him down. Me against you, and that's when I think I'm the best. From the opening week right through the postseason, no unit in football played more consistently than the men of Washington's national defense. Unscored on at home and unbeaten anywhere, the Redskins took their perfect record into the snake pit that is Chicago's Soldier Field. Lying in wait were the always rough and physical Bears, who were expected to give Washington its sternest test of the young season. These are the games that are won or lost in the trenches. And right from the start, the Redskins seized control of the pit. Defense left Chicago black and blue, then turned matters over to the offense. On, offense. A major element in Washington's successful rushing attack was the presence of wide receiver Art Monk, who wasn't bashful about throwing a well-timed downfield block. Fortunately, Monk's talents did not end there, as he emphatically proved to a badly torched Chicago second. back the drop sets fire into the near side monk is wide open for a touchdown washington redskins the bears eventually closed the gap to 10 to 7 but the defense quickly responded with two fourth quarter interceptions by kurt covey and fred stokes the turnovers set up a field goal and another touchdown for washington's most prolific pass catcher Here goes Rippin back, looking left all the way, in the end zone, got a man, diving catch, Art Monk, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Washington tallied the last score and enjoyed the last laugh as one of only two NFL teams that remained unbeaten. The Redskins were beginning to put their own signature on the 1991 season, but additional penmanship would be required against the Browns, such as the task of rewriting the NFL record book. On this day, Art Monk reached another milestone that put him one step closer to his inevitable Hall of Fame enshrinement. Rippon going to the end zone, got Monk in the corner, he makes the catch, touchdown, Washington Redskins. And he broke the record. Art Monk now with 751 career receptions is number two all time on the NFL's reception list. Impressive numbers were posted by the running attack as well, gaining a season-high 208 rushing yards. And when Ernest Biner left the game with a hand injury, rookie replacement Ricky Irvins exploded for the longest run of the Redskins season. It's third down, six yards to go, and Irvins gets the call. Looking at the middle, now breaks it out, right tackle to the 40. Oh. 45, goodbye, it's a foot race. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! <laughs> 65 yards for Ricky Irvin. No other team enjoyed a better run-pass balance than the Redskins, thanks to the efforts of one of the finest offensive lines ever assembled. Center Jeff Bostic, pro bowler Mark Schlereth, and seven-year guard Raleigh McKenzie. 11-year main Jim Lachey, along with Russ Grimm, Mark Addicks, and Ed Simmons. And tight ends, Ron Middleton, Don Warren, Terry Orr, and James Jenkins. The Hogs were the NFL's primal force, as skilled at pounding as they were at protecting. It's one of the few last things in life that's physical, that's tough, other than war, where you actually see guys more or less go to battle and physically stand up for one another, and uh, I love that part of it. Get the it's probably not one of the most glamorous positions, but I think offensive linemen, uh, you know, take pride in what they do. And as a group, uh, you know, we have five guys out there who are pretty much a team within a team. I've uh, 
enjoyed running behind those guys. I, I think they, uh, they're one of the best lines in the NFL today, and uh, uh, they all contribute in their own way. Redskin runners further expressed their gratitude with the third best rushing total in the NFC. In his 13th pro season, Gerald Riggs, number 37, proved that if young horses run fast, then old horses know the way. No one had a better nose for the goal line than Riggs, proven by his team leading 11 rushing touchdowns. For the second consecutive season, number 21 Ernest Biner paced the Redskins with another 1,000-yard performance and a trip to the Pro Bowl. Only three conference runners gained more yardage, and the true importance of being Ernest was displayed in his receiving and occasional passing skills. NFC rookie gained more rushing yards in 1991 than Ricky Irvin's number 32, who provided the perfect injection of speed to Washington's running attack. Whatever the situation, the Redskins' backfield of Irvin's, Biner, and Riggs could always be counted on to deliver the goods. After a week off, the Redskins journeyed to the Jersey Meadowlands to battle the defending world champions. The Giants owned a six-game winning streak over Washington, a bit of history well understood by the nervous visitors from D.C. Do I smile? Do I sing? Do I look mean? What do I do? Do I jump? Do I run? Do I hop? If I smile, at least you won't know I'm scared, huh? Going to save it for now. The Redskins appeared to be running scared in the first half as the Giants bullied their way to a 13-0 lead. Joe Gibbs found little success with the run and nothing but heartache with the pass as the normally reliable Gary Clark dropped two certain touchdowns. The Giants had dominated, but an adjustment by Gibbs brought about a positive reversal of Redskin fortune. Hey, 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 listen. Johnny. hey listen in here. Hey, come here, Jim. Go some spread. Just don't go gut. Into the gut went the Hogs, and out came mighty might Ricky Irvins. This ability to control the line of scrimmage allowed Gary Clark his chance for redemption. Back goes Rippin, throws it in the end zone, Clark, touchdown! Dead, solid, perfect. What was open was Clark, wide open for the touchdown that clinched a win in the most pivotal game of the Redskins season. Rolling out to the near side is Rippon and steps up and throws it long for Clark at the five, grabs it, touchdown Washington Redskins. Two catches, two touchdowns for Gary Clark. Oh when ex-Redskins coach Jack Pardee brought the Oilers into RFK the following week, his goal was to knock off the league's last unbeaten team. Washington had other ideas. The great things we can be doing today, and the best one is kicking their ass. Yes, baby. Yeah. Turnovers, more than anything, told the story of the game. Right fumble, loose ball. Who's got it? Redskins, Redskins say they've got it. Redskins ball. The takeaway put Washington in position to break a 6-6 to tie early in the fourth quarter. And Ernest Biner responded with his longest scoring run of the year. High formation and out of the eye. It's Biner again on the carry. Breaks it outside. 20, 15, cuts back to the 10. 5, touchdown. Washington Redskins on a brilliant run by Ernest Biner. But with less than two minutes remaining, the Oilers rallied to tie. Oh! Oh! Takes the snap, hands to White. He dives for a touchdown. Oh! 
With the game knotted at 13, the Redskins uncharacteristically gave Houston a chance to win without the need for overtime. Ryan Mitchell at the one yard line, right at the goal line, out of the five, 10, he's the 15, up the middle of the 20, hit at the 20. Fumble! Fumble to football, there's a wild scramble, Houston says they have it. They have it. Then divine providence intervened to keep the Redskins unbeaten. Hold is good, kick is up, it's enough there, no it's good! Wide right left, wide right left, the Jiggins calls it! Just remember one thing, God has the Redskins in a pool. <laughs> Given this second chance, Washington seized the opportunity with an overtime interception by Daryl Green. A play that gave Chip Lowmiller the chance to put Houston away for good. Spot is the 31, a 41-yard kick from the right side hash mark. Hold is good, kick is up. There's enough to it. It's good! The Redskins win in overtime! The Redskins now sported the best record in football, making them an inviting target for brash-talking foes such as the Atlanta Falcons and their mouth from the South let's coach, go, Jerry Glanville. Hey, let's go, baby. It's us. It's us. We're playing like we got our backs against the wall, baby. Turn it over. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Look down at that team down there. Look down at them. Are you scared? I'm not scared. Are you frightened? I'm fighting. I'm not frightened. You're, I'm fighting. Are you afraid? Never been afraid in your life? Never. I love you. Especially since you've been here. <laughs> If the Falcons weren't afraid, they should have been. Before the fans had settled into their seats, quarterback Mark Rippon was already exploiting a crippled Atlanta secondary with relentless regularity. Any place you looked, there was Mark Rippon putting points on the scoreboard. Play action. Oh, it's Rippon on the bootleg, and he's wide open to the left side for a touchdown. Washington Redskins. What a fake. The Redskins were well on their way to their highest scoring game in 25 years. is ripping the pass. Yeah, they want Look more. Look at this. Look at this. Wide open, Clark. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. That was open. Oh, it was nothing back there. I knew when I saw it line up, I was like, yeah, so this I is sick. Oh. I can't even like this. Going deep on the fly for Clark. Caught at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. 61 yards for Gary Clark. over 300 yards with this one. Here goes Monk, Long throwing it up to the near side. He's got him on the run. It's Clark at the 15, 40, horse race, 30, 20, stumbles at the 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Damn, that was sweet. Rip, two back. When the last Redskin touchdown bomb was finally gathered in, Mark Rippon had accounted for more than 440 passing yards and a record-tying six touchdowns. But Rippon and the talented passing trio of the posse were merely warming up. The following week, the Washington Air Attack continued its artistry in the Steel City. Art Monk, Gary Clark, and Ricky Sanders enabled the Redskins to clinch a playoff berth by soaring through the air with the greatest of ease. Rippin with a deep drop, going deep, got Clark wide open at the 10, at the 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. After another 300-yard performance, Rippon turned the controls over to Jeff Rutledge, but the posse continued to pour it on. Back goes Rutledge to pass, fires it out over the middle, got Sanders at the 10, at the 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. They are the posse. Football's terrific trio of wideouts. Three receivers with speed, cutting, and toughness. From any spot, in any formation, they pose problems which few defenses are ever fully able to overcome. Going deep, got a man wide open, it's Clark. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. In a defensive scheme, normally you have one great receiver or maybe one or another guy is a good receiver, but when you have three, like the Washington Redskins, that really pulls a, a totally uh, different monster. 
They can't do the same things they would do if a team only had two great wide receivers. It makes them adjust to things they really don't adjust to. It begins with 12-year veteran Art Monk, a crunching blocker, master of the intermediate zone, savior on third and long, and the heir apparent to the all-time NFL receiving crowd. Monk keeps drives moving while Gary Clark ends them quickly with short routes that suddenly become long games. His forte is those the quick outs, the fives. He plays those type of passes real well. Few receivers get more yardage after the catch than Clark, who can stop on a dime, then go for the big payday in the end zone. And then there is Jack of all trades, Ricky Sanders. Blocker, ball carrier, home run threat. He's a key guy in his offense now. I mean, he plays more than myself and Art. Either one, one wide out, and that's Ricky, or three wide outs. So Ricky plays the majority of the time. The ex-running back has proven his worth in any role asked of him. Such versatility is one more reason why the posse can't be contained. So I was behind two great players, Gary and Art, and once I got my opportunity, I, I took advantage of it. Anytime all three of us are out there, I can't see one team stopping. Oh, it's always going to be one guy open, so you can't double all three of us at the same time. No regular season game reaches the intensity level of a clash with the Cowboys. Let's pump it up, baby. Let's go with it. Attitude. Attitude. Let's go, baby. In the opening minutes, Redskin defenders knock the Cowboys flat on their backs. Eight, eight one to pass, sets up quickly, fires it to the right side, picked off by Mayhew at the 28, he's down to the 20, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Washington! It would be Washington's only lead of the day. From then on, Dallas gambled and succeeded with everything they tried. There it the is. alley-oop, coming to the near corner, up in the air, in the end zone, he leaping got it. catch, he caught it, there touchdown for Dallas! It had taken 13 weeks for someone to finally defeat the Redskins. Hopes for a perfect season had vanished. But the chance to clinch Washington's first Eastern Division title in four years was ripe for the taking the following week against the Rams. Rebound, rebound. It's time to get back on the top. Starting today. Okay, we got 60 minutes to hit the winning division. Let's go! Washington struggled to a one-point halftime lead, then brought the Rams back to reality with a quick flurry of scoring strikes. In the play-action fake, rolling left is Rippon, looking right for the tight end, got a man out there, 25-20, gone, or touchdown, Washington Redskins. Setting up the screen to the near side, got it to Erky Urban. He's back up to the 20-yard line, 15, 10, and goodbye. Touchdown, Washington Redskins on a screen pass, ladies and gentlemen. Huzzah, huzzah, will wonders never cease. Touchdown, big O! Touchdown. In the end zone, Sanders, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Y'all know we won the division today, don't you? Y'all realize we won the division today? You guys were set up last week to come inside, too. I saw the X's where the camera was going to be and where the uh, coach is supposed to stand. But. It feels good to lock it up, though. Now the next is home field. Home field. Home field. For the first time since their Super Bowl season of 1987, the Washington Redskins wore the Eastern Division crown. This championship was a testament to the players who had fought for it, the Frosch who had masterminded it. Hey, next week now, next week, home field, huh? Next week, home field, gotta get Trent back. Good Joe job, Gibbs job, is probably the most psychologically aware coach I've ever been around. He, he has a great feel for pulling the right strings and saying the right things to guys. and The reason I say that he's good is because he's believable. Because of his discipline, because of his ability to concentrate, he can, he can totally 
consume himself with football. You can tell because the game plans we get on Wednesdays are like, you know, this is terrific. They've only had two days to work on it. Sometimes as soon as you see that game plan, you know when it's going to work because his enthusiasm putting it in, you know, I mean, that's that's his, his offensive mind is unbelievable. And I think that, you know, during the season, you know, he just tells himself, hey, for the next six months, I'm thinking nothing but football. I think this is one of the best football teams that I've been with, period, where the players have been taken upon themselves to be the leaders and the motivating factor and have done a great job charting the course and they're the ones that have made it a special kind of year for us. Now only one goal remained, playoff home field advantage. It's a contact sport, it's a hidden game and it starts right here, we're doing a hit. Let's yeah! go! Defense spotted Phoenix two touchdowns and no more, while the offense mounted a second half comeback to wrap up the win. Going to the corner. Is. Sanders is there. Caught. Got to be a touchdown. The yes, baby. Yes, baby. Going to the show, baby. With home field in the playoffs secure, Washington returned home and closed out the regular season at RFK with a thorough thrashing of their one-time tormentors from New York. Hurry up is Mark Rippon, looking, throws it out over the top, got to complete to Gary Clark in the giant 49, breaks a tackle to the 40, the 30, horse race, near side 20, he's gone, 5, touchdown, Washington Redskins. The Redskins earned a franchise record tying 14th victory with conventional scores and a trick play that left the Giants dazed and confused. Here's the end around fake again, the Monk this time. There goes Rippon going deep on the fly to Clark. He's at the one, into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. The regular season ended in Philadelphia, where injured Eagle quarterback Randall Cunningham seemed quite content to be on the sidelines and out of the reach of Washington's defense. The Redskins substituted liberally and rested many starters after halftime, yet still led until a field goal in the final seconds gave the Eagles an upset victory. Despite finishing the year with this loss, 1991 had been one of the greatest seasons in team history, and its star performer had clearly been Mark Rippon. All season long, a crescendo of appreciation had built for the rejuvenated Washington Redskins quarterback. Rippon sets, fire into the near side, Monk is wide open for a touchdown, Washington Redskins. Well, he threw a bullet there. There go, Rip! There go, Rippon! In 1991, Rippon established a well-earned reputation as the most accurate long passer in the game. He finished the season with a baker's dozen of completions that traveled 47 yards or longer and led all conference quarterbacks in yardage and touchdowns. Behind the success story of Mark Rippon is a classic saga of redemption. A quest for recognition that began in 1988 amidst conflict and controversy. Rippon going to get sacked for the first time today. Bumble the ball, picked up by Harry Carson. Rippon's early years in Washington were pockmarked by mistakes that made him a target of scorn and ridicule. His arm was a cannon, but his cannonballs carried Redskins receivers beyond the field of play. But more damning than any other deficiency was the perception that Mark Rippon collapsed in the clutch. In the playoff game, his eyes weren't telling me that he was believing in himself. He came up to the line of scrimmage, and in the middle of the first quarter, I came to the sidelines and said, this game, this game is going to be won. This guy doesn't believe he can do it. Rippon's mistake-riddled playoff performance against the 49ers only reinforced the doubters who questioned his ability to lead the Redskins to a championship. When it comes down to crunch time, some guys want the ball. Some guys want to make the plays. Other guys would just as soon, hey, give it to somebody else. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll choose to play another time. The quiet and modest Rippon, who never talked a good game, finally began playing one in 1991. 
The foolish mistakes vanished, and in their place were the right plays at the right time, called and executed with flawless precision. The bottom line is, are you known as a winner or, or a loser? And I think, you know, it's uh, I've played some games, you know, where I've, I've just been totally off and we've ended up winning. But uh, once I leave that locker room with a win, I mean, no matter how you play, you're still go home with a smile on your face. You still are waiting for the guy to get on the field and take you down and win a championship, to win a Super Bowl. It's still not over for Mark, let's face it. He's going to be judged here with the Redskins if he can win a Super Bowl because that's what other quarterbacks here have done. And so he's going to be judged on that. The 1991 playoffs would be a proving ground for Mark Rippon. His performance would determine the success or failure of the Redskins season. from a windy, rainy Washington, D.C., where all year long the Redskins have enjoyed the view from the top. But this week, they've begun to realize just how far they could fall. It's the Redskins and the Falcons, playoff game number one. Joe Gibbs hates windy weather because it disrupts his passing game. But think about this. If it disrupts his passing game, it'll disrupt the Falcons as well. And what are the Falcons going to do if they can't pass? <laughs> They're gonna die, that's what they're gonna do. Die, you die. All the pressure's on them. We just go have fun and play ball. Play well. That's all we gotta do. They're the ones gotta win. We just gotta Primed and eager to avenge their regular season thrashing, the funky and frisky Atlanta Falcons strutted into RFK. But the steady downpour rained all over their rap party. The Falcons' dance floor melted into mud, and the sure-footed and sure-handed Redskins pounced on every Atlanta mistake. At one stretch, the wind-swept and soggy Falcon attack went six straight possessions without producing a first down. Meanwhile, Washington turned the torn-up turf to its advantage, slogging through the slop with hard running from Ricky Irvin. Urbans over to the left side, breaks the tackle at the 10, he's to the 5, diving in, running in, touchdown, Washington Redskins. When the Falcons tried to get their ground game on track, they became unglued. Number 71, Charles Mann, stripped the ball free, one of Atlanta's six turnovers of the game, setting up another touchdown from designated scorer Gerald Riggs. Goes Riggs up the middle, head first, dives, touchdown, Washington Redskins, right up the cut behind Don Warren. Visions of victory grew even more waterlogged for sinking Atlanta in the second half. The Redskins kept their balance in the RFK quagmire, shoving their opponents into the mud and out of the playoffs. There goes Riggs over the left side. Dives for a touchdown, Washington Redskins. Riggs' final score cushioned the Washington victory. Only the Detroit Lions now stood in Washington's path for a trip to Minneapolis and the Super Bowl. Get bumped up! We're gonna kick their butts! Woo! Yeah! Intimidation. Don't worry about nothing else but intimidation. This is where Detroit ain't going! The Super Bowl! Ain't no tomorrow. This is it. This is bigger than the Super Bowl. Because if you lose today, you don't go. With the game barely a minute old, the Redskins overwhelmed the Lions and punched in the first points of the afternoon. But to the right side, Riggs with a head down, drives, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Rock and roll, here we go. 
Detroit responded with a pair of scores, but a chip low Miller field goal and a second Riggs touchdown gave Washington a 17 to 10 halftime advantage. Behind Donnie Warren, he goes left side, drags, dives, touchdown, Washington Redskins. He's into the end zone. Right behind Middleton and Warren, Gerald Riggs goes over. Washington added three quick points to begin the third period, then turned matters over to assistant head coach Richie Pettibone and his national defense. The second half was an exercise in futility for the Lions' attack. They gained a few yards, scored no points, and were completely overwhelmed by Washington's defense and its own special brand of capital punishment. The Lions' roar was permanently silenced, as were any remaining critics of quarterback Mark Rippon. The one-time Washington whipping boy cast away old seasons of doubt and dismay with a pair of picture-perfect second-half touchdown passes. Got a man down there. It's Clark. He's got it at the two. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Griffin hits the big one. Wow, what a pass. That was the home run he's been looking for. Boy, what a great pass that was. What a great play. And now those fans in the end zone are going bananas. On Washington's next series at the start of the fourth quarter, Rippon and the Redskins sealed the Lions' fate. Lobson in the air, Monks in the end zone, catches it, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Monk ran underneath it like Willie Mays, chasing that fly ball in center field. Everybody's getting famous today. Big time players make big time plays. Art Monk and Mark Rippin, that's right. The passes come through. I think it's safe to make reservations now in Minneapolis. You think it's over? We got of reservations. It is. Of course it is, he said. We got reservations made. That's it. Referee call the game. Sonny's, it's over. Unfortunately for Detroit, the game wasn't quite over yet. Andre Ware is back. Throws in the left side. Picked off at the 33-yard line. Here comes the return by Darrell Green. He's back to the 10. Cuts to the 5. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Icing on the cake right there. victory clinched Washington's record tying fifth visit to the show and an opportunity for Joe Gibbs and the Redskins franchise to win its third world championship in the last 10 years. Jeez, thank God that scared way through. <laughs> Minneapolis, Minnesota, the NFL's frozen outpost, site of the ultimate showdown, the Buffalo Bills versus the Washington Redskins in Super Bowl 26. Time for Super Bowl 26. After two weeks of gassing about football, we finally get to play some football. Let's get to it. Who are we playing tomorrow? Nobody. This is it. This is it. Come on, young boy. Let's go. Oh! Oh! Do it for Mike. Do it for yourselves. Do it for everyone. One, two, three. Go. Right from the start. The Redskins seized control. Driving towards our right. Quick drop by Rippon. Throws it in the near flat to Monk. Breaks a tackle. He's at the 20. 15, 10 to the 5. Knocked out of bounds in the 3. Almost had himself a touchdown. 
Rippon rolling out to his right, throws it in the end zone, leaping catch for Monk, touchdown, Washington Redskins. They got overruled that one. Well, let's see. Left foot on the replay is down, right foot is on out. the line, out. He's out, he's out. Let's go, touchdown. Rutledge to hold, and the Buffalo Bills at least a psychological victory there. Uh-oh, fumble on the snap. Rutledge picks it up. It's going to be no points. The NFL's two highest scoring teams couldn't muster a point in the first quarter dominated by Washington. On defense, the Redskins gambled and blitzed on running downs, limiting Thurman Thomas to three yards rushing in the first half. When Jim Kelly passed, his receivers were punished. Buffalo's hyperdrive blitzkrieg no huddle met at a mere 78 total first half yards. Second and ten, Buffalo sputtering. Back goes Kelly, sets up at the five, throwing deep, got a man there. It's picked off by Daryl Green with a leaping catch at the 47. First and 10, Washington. He's got too much experience for that kind of pass against the Redskins. Line it up, let's go! In the second quarter, the Redskins went to the no hunt, rolled the pass pocket, and Mark Rippon went to work. Got Sanders at the 20, grabs the ball and pulled out at the 16. Rippon back to pass on a quick shot. Throws it in the near flat to Biner at the 5, dies for the corner. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Joe Gibbs' balanced juggernaut rolled to 17 unanswered points, leaving the Bills reeling and on the ropes by intermission. Rippon hands to Riggs over the right side. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Rippon runs back up the field, sprints <laughs> up on his fist. He is excited. I have never seen Rippon so excited. I mean, he's The Super Bowl. Yeah. He hasn't been here before. Is everybody hanging there to death? Nobody said it was going to be easy now. Redskins have taken control of another Super Bowl in the second quarter with an explosion. The eyes of the football world were glued on one thing during halftime. And for the Buffalo Bills, the slender shape of the singer was especially significant. Come on, don't that lady sing it, let's go! Come on, baby, it ain't over yet! But the final act of this opera had already been written in the game plan of the Washington Redskins. The tragic figure would be Thurman Thomas. Knowing that he is virtually impossible to cover as a receiver out of the backfield, the Redskins constantly blitzed, forcing Thomas to stay in the backfield as an extra blocker, effectively eliminating him as a pass catcher. Even if Thomas successfully picked up the blitz, quarterback Jim Kelly would still lose Thomas as his favorite safety valve. And if Thomas missed his block... Thurman Thomas, the lone back, seven yards deep. Kelly to pass, blitzed up the middle, has to dump it off, picked off, intercepted at the 25, to the 20, the 15. It's Gadea to the 5, almost to the end zone, forced out of bounds at the 2. First play, first play of the game, second half. Coming right up the middle on Jim Kelly on the blitz was Andre Collins, and Thurman Thomas was unable to pick him up. He barely touched him. Bills are stunned here on the near sideline. <laughs> Bills are stunned. Redskins ball first and goal. Motion by Warren. Rinks going left. Cuts back over the middle. Walks into the end zone. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Very cool. Very calm. Never touched. This is too easy. This is a great. This isn't what the commissioner wanted. A blowout. The Bills trailed 24 to nothing, and their faith in themselves would be put to the final test as they tried to rally. He's got to fight. They ain't that good, man, if you keep playing. Right? Just got to keep playing. The Bills did put 10 quick points on the board, but the Redskins would answer back again even more quickly and more decisively with a strategy brutally simple and simply brutal. The tight end's gonna clear. He's gonna run him out. If you run him out, let him run it. 
The clear is just stopping right on that back, coming inside and popping in the mouth. Blitz. He's back. Corner blitz. Hit from behind. The ball in the air. Fumble down there at the 15-yard line. Redskins have it. Redskins have it. Oh, that's a knockout That's punch. a knockout blow. And he's in dazed. I tell you, Jim Kelly is out. If Kelly was out, then Mark Rippon was very definitely in. Here we go. Good protection again. Going deep. He's got Clark in the end zone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. 30-yard touchdown pass. Rippon has struck gold. Way to go, Mark Rippon, MVP of Super Bowl 26. Say I'm going to Disney World. I'm coming with you. Right? It's quite a moment. They do win with dignity. They're, they've got a lot of class. They got a new set of T-shirts, and I think they probably say "World Champion" on them. For the third time in ten years, Joe Gibbs and the Redskins scaled the heights of football greatness. The 1991 Washington Redskins are an honor to the team's glorious past and the world champions of pro football's present.